Greetings, Facebook Nation. How is everyone today? Uh, my name is Chris Kiley. I'm the Associate Director of Texans for the Arts, and I am joined by my boss and partner in crime, Anne S. Graham, the Executive Director of Texans for the Arts. Today, uh, in lieu of a special guest, we're going to give you a proper update, so to speak, on everything that's going on at both the state and federal levels, because there is a lot. We have updates uh, surrounding the reopening process, updates about National Arts Advocacy Day, which is just around the corner, among many, many other things. So without further ado, I'm gonna pass it over to Anne, and she's gonna run down our punch list of all the important advocacy insights and updates we have for you this week. Thank you, Chris. Thank you for being my good partner in crime. Again, we do have a lot going on and are happy to see you on our weekly Wednesday advocacy update. So I'm gonna start with the state. As you know, we're, boy, not quite halfway through the Texas legislative session, the 87th session. You've heard from um, ourselves and you've heard from Shannon Gangerty, our lobbyist as well, giving you updates on where we stand. This morning are two of the primary bills that we are following along with the rest of the state is Senate Bill 1 and House Bill 1, which are the state budget bills. As you remember, the one thing the legislature must do before the end of the session is pass a balanced budget. So we're following both of those. And critically, we're following those because that is where the money for the Texas Commission on the Arts, the state agency, the very first item in the Texas state budget sits. And we are working to, as you have heard and may remember, fully fund the TCA's cultural district grant program, um, which has been funded $10 million last session. And we are trying to maintain that those funds. Um, there is a $10 million appropriation in the House Bill 1 for the TCA's cultural district program. Um, but in the Senate budget, it was cut by $4 billion, excuse me, $4 million. Um, again, that is a biennial budget. So that's $2 million a year. Um, and this morning was the culmination of the sub-Senate finance subcommittees over the various articles and the TCA sits in article one for sits in article one along with the subcommittee over one four and five mm -hmm. and um, we did learn in the markup report that the four million dollar cut had not been restored uh, much to our consternation so in the coming weeks and in the rest of the session as the next step is the conference committee we will be continuing to monitor, advocate on behalf of restoring those funds, and that will be a critical part of our work. Con conference committee won't come together probably till later in April, um, but again, we will be monitoring that. There was an interesting start to the Senate Finance Subcommittee meeting today, or the full committee meeting today, and that was a discussion around just how much money had come into the state around the CARES Act, which was last July, the COVID Relief Fund, um, how much money had come into the state, how the decisions had been made, how those resources were used, and whether there was any money left out of those federal pools. Um, and there was a description there and a, a discussion around those questions. And the bottom line is there is zero dollars that have not been spent out of those. So there is not a federal uh, rescue plan um, from the earlier CARES and COVID relief. However, just about a week and a half ago, uh, President Biden signed the American Rescue Plan. That is the $1.9 trillion plan, um, which will come, some of that will come to Texas. And the kind of parts of it that will come to Texas will be ones that we certainly hope um, to benefit the arts and culture sector. You, you may have known already from the American uh, Rescue Plan, if you received a $1,400 um, direct payment, uh, that's what was every uh, individual was to be getting one of those. There's also other things that you may be impacting your own tax situation, the child care tax credit, and other ways that will benefit um, families, rent issues, child care issues, health care support. So there's a whole variety of ways um, all due to the challenges that the economy is facing because of the pandemic that um, this American Rescue Plan will benefit the state of Texas. <laughs> Chief is $16.7 billion will come to the state and $10.4 billion will come to local communities, that's cities and counties, both large and small in terms of, of municipalities, they either gauged by 50,000 and under or 50,000 and up. Um, there's capital projects with a separate line item. There's education money with a separate line item. And then closer to home for us, the National Endowment for the Arts and the National Endowment for the Humanities got $135 million apiece. That will translate to about $1.2 million to, uh, for the Texas Commission on the Arts. 
that will um, again be distributed and, and adjudicated as they did with the CARES funding that came through last summer. Those are the really big figures. Um, the first sort of appropriation of those dollars will be coming in May of this year, which is very soon. That's gonna be 50% of the funding. The second allotment will come in, excuse me, yeah, in March of 2024, no, 2022, get my years right. And, and then the all of the money must be spent by December 31st, 2024. So, it sounds like 2024 is a long way away, but the dispersal of resources and the appropriation of where these funds are going to be spent is going to happen really quickly. And so mm -hmm. we really want to be ahead of that game and are already starting our conversations and with elected officials and our community leaders around how those funds could be spent. So Anne, let me ask you before you before you move on, let me ask you on these two fronts with the Senate not restoring the four million dollars and with the prospect of such a large amount of money coming in through the American Rescue Plan. Is there anything you want to tell our base about what they can do today? Should we be calling our elected officials? I know we at Texans for the Arts are monitoring the situation, beginning some of those conversations uh, with elected officials. Is there things that right now people should be doing or, or should we be in sort of a holding pattern for the time being until we get a better idea of the strategy moving forward? Yeah, I'm, I'm always one to say be engaged, but at the moment I'd say we're in a holding pattern to sort of digest the whole budget. The subcommittees have not finished doing their markup. We haven't heard how the whole Senate budget is shaping up. Um, we will be looking at how it will respond in the conference committee and we'll be looking at, you know, who the key decision makers are and, and making, you know, direct uh, communication. We always want you to connect with your legislator to establish that relationship to have them be apprised of the needs that we have in the arts community and the solutions we bring to the economy as the arts community as well. So I would say hold tight for a minute. You should all be signed up to get our newsletter, which you can sign up at TexansForTheArts.com um, and we'll keep you apprised that way. So there are still, yeah, still conversations to happen and still um, looking at, again, what the final Senate budget is. But we know we will continue to advocate and hope to end up that in the end of the session with the full $10 million restored. Right. So there's no doubt more work to be done. We're just sort of in the process right now of figuring out and unpacking exactly how that's going to play out. Yes. And I think, you know, I mean, we all know the loss. You know the loss that you've experienced with your own arts organizations. You know the loss that you've experienced, um, you know, as an independent artist or as a gig worker or losing your job. Um, and we know that there's so much of the support that does come from the hotel occupancy tax and the average loss um, as stated by the comptroller for the hotel tax was 48.5% across the state, which is huge. And it's crazy has, money, yeah. Has negatively impacted um, large and small communities that use the hotel occupancy tax for art support. So um, we are hoping that some of that might be offset by the American Rescue Plan. And um, you know, we'll be looking at ways to try to supplant that loss. And of course, as if we're talking to our, you know, talking to our base, there's no reason why, as a member of an arts organization, if you have suffered these losses, which many of us have, there's no reason why you shouldn't be thinking creatively about how to communicate that effectively to your elected officials. Because unless we frame the issue, and you know, in my advocacy trainings, I'm always a fan of the power of the personal story. Unless they know what's happening to their constituents, you, our base, it's going to be really hard to have any traction moving forward with the relief. Yeah, so we still have our groundwork to do, but we need to be working on that very quickly because, again, decisions will be made May uh, as the first 50% tranche, as they say. Um, you know, that's not very far away. That's like right. six, or seven weeks away. So the other thing that we do during the session is monitor bills, apart from Senate Bill and House Bill 1, which are the, the heavy lifters. Um, uh, we're keeping our eyes out on hotel occupancy tax bills. There are nothing that we're opposing at the moment, but there are ones that um, do diversify funding streams, some that are looking at parks, parkland, and some that are called the Dark Sky Initiative. Well, the first one was actually passed last session. So looking at other ways to support tourism related projects that will help draw people to communities, spend the nights, uh, engage in cultural activities and tourism based activities. So we are watching those. Um, two sessions ago, we were successful in passing Senate Bill 1221, which is the hotel occupancy tax reporting bill. 
And uh, last session, we assisted on a county hot reporting bill. It did, made it to the governor's desk, did not get signed. And it has been resubmitted and refiled by Senator uh, Birdwell this session. And I think it's Senate Bill 1655, and we are supporting that um, to follow on the heels of transparency and to really understand not very many counties actually uh, uh, levy a, a hotel tax for right. the county. So, but the more we know about that, the more um, we are likely to develop those relationships and see if some of those funds can't, in fact, funds arts and cultural activities in counties. So we'll be monitoring that. On that front, Anne, can you talk really briefly about the bill tracker tool that we're working on um, getting up on our website for our base? Yes, so it's already posted on TexansForTheArts.com. If you go to the text, the advocacy to tab down to the, uh, I think Action Alert is called, um, you will find a bill tracker. And on there is a list of the bills that we are currently monitoring, along with some federal legislation that we're actually looking at as well. So, um, and we, do, we post information there and, and you can also, if you really wanna get wonky about it, you can set up your own account on Texas Legislative Online. I recommend you Google it. Um, and it's a fun thing to just look through the bills, the committees, the hearings, and really get your finger on the pulse. You can watch videos of hearings, um, and which is really an important part of the process to be engaged as well. And you can go down to the Capitol as well. Um, the Capitol is pretty cloistered and closed at the beginning of the session. There are restoration of people there and there are some more activity committees are starting to meet. There's definitely feels busier which also speaks to something else, which is the governor's um, reopening of the state. This is now about two weeks ago that the governor said that the state is now 100% open um, and that masks are not required. Many communities are still, or, or local leadership are still asking for people to wear masks. Businesses can do that as well. Uh, but the city is definitely open and the state is definitely open in a different way and it's noticeable and there's still healthcare precautions that should be followed suit. Vaccines, more vaccines are being given Monday. Vaccines will be available to everybody over the age of 16. Um, and we are would be getting closer to herd immunity with time as long as the supply is there for the demand. It does have ramifications for those of you who have performing arts venues and may or may not be comfortable opening your venue sh shoulder to shoulder. Um, I would recommend to Google the NEA and go to their, they did a webinar just yesterday. It's recorded, starts out with an interview with Dr. Fauci and it goes over a whole array of reopening issues. Okay. Also, um, I mean, there, there's important information around um, you know, how you would approach and maybe stagger over time, not beginning with 100% occupancy. Right. So, you know, businesses are requiring that as well. So that has a huge effect. And of course, now what we'll be watching for is if there is an uptick in COVID cases, not just because of the 100% opening, right? That is critical, but the other is spring breaks and where students have left and spent time in dense packs of friends and coming back to, to their communities and how might that impact COVID in, in across the state. So those are things that obviously we'll be monitoring and it, it affects the arts community dearly in terms of their capacity to you know, bring their programs back to life. Um, the last thing before I'll turn it over to you, Chris, to wrap up, um, at the federal level, we are the state captain for the Americans for the Arts National Arts Adv Action Summit. We used to be in Washington, D.C. for three days every, every year in the spring, um, advocating and lobbying in person. Now we're virtual as of last year and this year. And that's the first two weeks of, of April. We recommend if you want to join us as part of the Texas delegation, please do so. Go to Americans for the Arts Action Fund or Americans for the Arts National Arts Action Summit. And there is a way to participate for free. And there are is a week long of training, in-depth training around advocacy and the issues that are impacting us at the federal level, such as NEA funding, arts in the justice system, arts in the military, arts in education, arts in healthcare, arts in the creative workers, um, the creative economy. There's a lot of issues that we will then, the, sec the third week of April, excuse me, the second week of April, we'll be setting up visits with our senators and our representatives for constituents to meet and really talk about what's happening back here in Texas and why it's important to support uh, various uh, aspects of legislation and to thank them for, for voting in support of the American Rescue Plan. So those are just a few of the things we're balancing. Um, I'm gonna turn it over to Chris and uh, we appreciate your support of our work and please do sign up on our website to keep uh, apprised with our newsletter it comes out usually about every 10 days, sometimes more often during the session because there's just a lot to follow. Chris? 
Great, thanks, Ann. Uh, the last thing that I wanted to talk about a little bit today was in approximately a week, a week, two weeks from now, be on the lookout. We'll be starting another round of our Texans for the Arts Regional Conversation Circuit. So uh, we've broken this data up into five regions. We'll be posting that map so you can identify where you fall. But over the course of the second and third week of April, we'll be virtually traveling around the state to hear from you, our base, about the issues that matter most to you. We'll be framing the issues uh, around the current Texas legislative session and talking a little bit more in depth about the American Rescue Plan and what that means for the arts. So as I said, we're finalizing the dates this week. We'll be on the lookout starting next week for registration. We hope to see many of you there as we do our roadshow virtually around the state. And the last thing I wanted to say was, you've heard in the last 15 minutes, this was a blitzkrieg of all the things going on. This is obviously one of our busiest times of the biennium with the Texas legislative session in full swing, moving into National Arts Advocacy Day. And the only way that we can do this work and do it as nimbly and as in depth as we do is with the help of you, our base. Our membership is critical and vital to our work. Your support is the only way that we can continue to do this work at the level that we do and ensure that the arts remain vibrant and healthy in our communities. So I hope that all of you, if you're not a member of Texans for the Arts, will take the opportunity to go visit our website, www.texansforthearts.com and there is a join button in the corner. Membership starts at $25. Every member counts. Every membership counts. You guys are our base. We do this work together. We don't work in a vacuum and we need your support. So I hope that you'll consider that. Um, we've had a full day today. We'll be, we'll be back next week, I'm sure, with uh, a guest speaker once again, but because there was so much going on this week, we definitely thought it was important to take an opportunity to spend some time, just the two of us with you, to go over all the things that we're, we're working on currently. So we look forward to seeing you next Wednesday, same time, same place. We thank you for being with us and uh, we'll see you next Wednesday. Take care, everybody. Have a good week. Thank you. Thank you all.